Hello, everyone. You are listening to the DMZ America podcast from a guy who can't pronounce the word America for Wednesday, <laughs> March 8th. Why do you hate America, Chad? I don't hate America. I just hate its pronunciation. <laughs> oh, fuck you, Mr. Vespucci asshole. Why couldn't you be just called Bob? Like, then we'd just be like Bobica or something. Wait, you. Columbus. Oh, that's weird. You sort of phased out there. You sort of like, I didn't hear you. Oh, there you oh, are. Oh, now. Okay. okay. Should we start, start over? You just said something insanely brilliant that nobody heard. So say it again. Okay. No, I said, well, it could just be named Chris. That's true. Yo. For Christopher Chris. Columbus. Yeah. I, yeah. What country are you from? Chris. <laughs> from Chris. Yeah. I mean, there's I like lots, lots of places with very short names, like your favorite uh, protectorate, Guam. Um, Guam. Is it a protector or what is it? What is its status? It's a territory. Oh yeah, territory. Um, what's the difference between a territory and uh, like another, like say Puerto Rico? Is that a territory? I can I can answer that, but I'd rather our listeners and viewers go back and look it up themselves. Oh, there you go. All right. Well, anyway, because so I don't because I don't know the answer. We have a lot to do in a in a relatively short time here for our DMZ America podcast. So. Ted uh, Scott, Raw, we have from the some, left. Scott, we have. Yeah, I, I am Ted Raw coming from the left, and Scott you Stan are, is coming to you from the right. Yeah, man, this might be the the just the crappiest <laughs> opening, and we're going to post this <laughs> first time ever on on YouTube and video. Like, what the fuck are we doing? All right, so <laughs> what do we got here? <laughs> well, humble brag. First off, okay, humble here's brag. the thing. I say I say this a lot on this podcast, and I've said it a lot to Ted. Is that he? He one of the best. You are. I have no reason to suck up to you. Uh, you're one of the best analysts of news and and pro projecting outcomes of most people that I know. You really have. And I, I I don't have the list in front of me, but you have a long list of stuff that you were right about. But here's the latest: Nord Stream pipeline bombed. The initial story said that the Russians did it to themselves, <laughs> even though it, it it lacks credulity or any common sense of any kind. True. why they would have done this and ted was the first out of the box in a column in cartoons saying that this is horse shit that no it was clearly the ukrainians or allies of the ukraines or or people who are sort of allies like the united states who are kind of sort of maybe allies but we yeah. give them well billions, my, billions my first thought it was either the u.s or one of its lap dogs like britain uh or one of the other nato countries and then um uh, you know, what's what's his name? Um, Seymour Hirsch uh, came out with a piece alleging that it was uh, it was the U.S. itself that used Norway as a base. But uh, with they had some cooperation from Norway, but the but U.S. did it themselves. Um, that mm. certainly makes a lot more sense. Uh, now there's a piece in The Washington Post saying that it was uh, that that the U.S. I feel like they're trying to throw the scent off the Seymour Hirsch story. They're saying that it's a. Ukraine, a pro-Ukraine group, and I'm like, could with you a submarine, by the way, <laughs> right, with it, <laughs> right, right, and and, and the ability like... to uh, and access to some serious, uh, some some seriously uh, interesting industrial explosives, right, um, and with very water demolition drivers. So, so I don't I think it's going to be. I don't think it's like Zelensky's old TV, uh, you know, fellow TV actors. Uh, who who did this? Um, you know, it just doesn't seem like right. A pro-Ukraine group. What the fuck does that even mean? But anyway, the point is that what they are admitting tacitly is that it was not Russia, and that it was obviously uh, the U.S. or Ukraine or one of their allies. Obviously. And how much shit have you taken over? Uh, you know, over. Let's just say that story specifically. I mean, I'm sure you took some crap because you oh, said. Yeah. This is this is hogwash. There is no reason for Russia to bomb their own pipeline, and I had to agree with you. I mean, it just it just doesn't make any damn sense. But Billions that was the of narrative. Dollars in damaged infrastructure, you know, for what a false flag operation. Billions of dollars in lost, well, probably hundreds of millions of dollars in lost natural gas, which uh, created a you know it, it was an ecological disaster. But Scott, you have some bragging to do of your own before we yeah. Get well, I. I had COVID uh, two and a half years ago the first time, and it damn near killed me. And I still carry long haul stuff, long haul symptoms, uh, smell and taste are diminished. Uh, there are certain things I cannot taste anymore or smell. 
Um, could that be good? And, like, you could like maybe not smell dog shit anymore, and that'd be like, Whoa. oh no, well, that's one of the things I can't smell is uh, is poop, and uh, which is great. So COVID, I, I, COVID, COVID. <laughs> Janine and I like to go out hiking, and they have porta potties out in the wilderness, which are not how can I put this well maintained. Mm. So I can go in them and just be fine. Now it's like my superpower. <laughs> you, um, you, you could go in like camp out inside. Well, I can, and of course, because of the methane, it's nice and warm. Uh, <laughs> don't light a match. Yeah, don't, don't. Um, uh, but the sad thing is, I can't smell or taste coffee. Mm. And uh, I was at a friend's restaurant. He has shut up, Ted. He's he's, he's hoisting his cup. Um, is I was at a friend's. Uh, he owns a seafood restaurant, and he has, he makes a great lobster bisque. And I ordered a bowl, and I got it. I took a sip took a couple of sips and all I could t- taste like a big bowl of uh, salt. I mean, it was oh. just, I still can't taste lobster. Now I so, remember anyway, you telling me like a few years ago that just, this did not feel like an organic. Um, yeah. I'm going off on a tangent, but, but other things, things like uh, fatigue, which I still have to wrestle with uh, day before yesterday, I had to take like three naps during the course of the day. Uh, and, but what have hit me for about a year and a half before I got the, vaccine was foggy headedness. And I actually had to quit a job that I was enjoying at the Alabama Policy Institute uh, that because I was I couldn't I couldn't yeah. focus. It was yeah. impossible. All of this is to say it was a virus. And I, you know, in your 60s, when you get to be in your 60s, you've had a lot of viruses. And this just felt Fire so right. unlike anything else I'd ever had that when they were saying that this, that there was a, a bio lab in Wuhan and that there's a chance that this came out of there. And, there, and the only people mentioning this or reporting on it were from the far right. But I'm thinking, you know what, there, there's some legitimacy to this idea. This, this, I, Ted and I both had COVID and we can both tell you that, no, this thing is not, it's not a virus that you would think would develop naturally you know it would come from a bat well now all the, and i mentioned I, don't forget i was not don't forget those how could i but don't forget that you know that anyone who had the temerity to mention that this came from that lab was shouted down was called a QAnon nutbag i mean and i i never even I never said that definitively this is what happened, but we have to look at this. Where did this come from? So a report came out about it, I think it was 18 months after uh, the pandemic began, and it was who? And they said, no, it definitely came from a bat, definitely came from the wet market. Well, it turns out that uh, who is underwritten by, I think, what is it? Upwards of 80% of its income comes from, stay with me, kids, the People's Republic of China. So of course it's going to, yeah, they're not going to, now, now some reports are coming out saying that yeah, there's this may actually be the case, mm-hmm. and I and can't not, tell it's you. It's not I'm, definitive, right? And it's very the source is strange because it's the Department of Energy of all things. I know it's, it was weird, but there's another report from another uh, another executive agency. It was the executive. FBI. Yeah, and so both of them think just, basically they're like, "This is our theory. This is our working theory. This is what we think happened." We can't tell you like with any high degree of certainty that this is the case, but this is what we believe happened. Right. And that at least gives me some vindication and some sense that, okay, I'm not nuts. Um, well, you, know, you might COVID be nuts, but you're right about this. Not for that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've been a crazy person. Sometimes you feel like you're nuts, sometimes you don't, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, so this is our, this is our, this is the segment we're going to call Humble Brag. And Ted was right about the Nord Stream pipeline and how, either the United States or one of its actual allies did it and how the COVID uh, virus COVID-19 probably came from a lab in, uh, in China. So um, yay us. No one will give us our props, by the way. Nobody will give us our props. Nobody. I don't think anybody has ever come back to you. Have they Ted? Because Ted has a much better record. it It has happened. Like for example, with my criticisms during the Bush years of Bush and you know the neocons and Af- uh, wars against Afghanistan and Iraq. And I have 15 years later gotten emails from people who are like, back then I really hated you and I sent you threats and or whatever. I sent you insulting things or I posted bad things about you on the internet. Now I realize you were right and I'm sorry. And I mean, look, that it takes, it, it's very big of someone to be able to have that level of self-awareness and uh, you know, it is a it is a lot 
you know, it's it's a little it's little and it's late and it doesn't do much good, but it's better than nothing. So I I appreciate it and uh, you know it's nice, but it it certainly has happened so much that now, for example, with my position against U.S. involvement with Ukraine, I'm also thinking, you know, it's very similar. Like I think to myself, well, you know, people are going to, Zelensky will be exposed as a charlatan. Ukraine will be exposed as an anti-democratic uh, country. And, you know, I just have to wait and, you know, maybe I'll get a few emails in 15 years if I'm still alive. And, you know, if email even still exists, but we should move on if, uh, yes, because we, we, our time is relatively short. Normally this podcast might be like going for trying to be the longest podcast ever. Uh, but, <laughs> But it's worth it. We're worth it. You should always listen. Absolutely. Listen Absolutely. So, um, so, so there's a the there's great a state of Texas. Inter- yes. So uh, five women who sought abortions unsuccessfully mm-hmm. uh, in the state of Texas mm-hmm. have filed a lawsuit mm-hmm. <laughs> against, again, we can crack up, have, have filed a lawsuit against the state of Texas over the, the uh, new Republican-led abortion law that prevents uh, them and all pregnant women from what they seeking, what they say is uh, proper obstrec- uh, obstetrics health care and placed their lives in danger. Um, if you read about this, uh, le- you know, there's these are some pretty harrowing stories uh, where, for example, uh, there's one case I, that really leapt out to me. They're all pretty bad. One was a woman who... Uh, had fertility treatment. So clearly uh, she wanted to have a child, okay? Uh, However, um, she learned very quickly that the child, the fetus was not going to be viable uh, and that it needed to be removed. Otherwise there was going to be, uh, she might might die. Uh, The, because of the law, the anti, the very strict, no exceptions, Texas anti-abortion law, uh, the way it works is the life of the mother has to be in immediate danger before they'll do that. So they had to wait till the the mother went into sepsis and was on the way to being, to dying before they would open her up and take out the dead kid. And, um, you know, I mean, obviously uh, I would say that, you know, no matter where you stand on abortion rights, it's pretty obvious in a situation like that, where expert medical opinion uh, indicates that uh, the, the the fetus is not viable; that it should have been removed immediately, and uh, and her inability to do that uh, violated her constitutional rights. Um, and so, uh, this is a pretty this is considered a landmark lawsuit, and I and it yeah, also I... is bad timing for the Republicans because this is going to start to work its way through the courts uh, as we go into the next year's presidential election. Yeah, I I mean I and I have been saying this on this podcast and elsewhere that regardless of how you feel about the abortion issue, uh, the fact that these legislatures have majorities who purport to support um, bans on abortion, but the bills were written by morons. They weren't written by doctors. They were written by, you know, uh, here in Alabama or some uh, Idaho or Texas. They're all these rural, you know, knuckle dragging morons who, who, who are not doctors and said no exceptions and that was that was you know we we've lost the ability for nuance and balance in this country which is gone and we never really had that in in great abundance to begin with but it's gone now so now we're going to have to have this kind of case and sadly we're going to have women die because these uh laws are so badly written that physicians look at it and say i don't know what i can or cannot tell you well, they let me just push back. It's not just that they're badly written. I mean, look, they're written that way. It's not a bug. It's a feature, right? I mean, these these laws were written that way. I mean, they. it's not like the legislature in Austin doesn't know how to amend bills. They could they could reconvene. Right. And, say, and they're going to. Well, there's no sign some of that. Are, so some far. states. Well, no, some states are already talking about that. Uh, but in other states, Alabama being among them, they're going to revisit the legislation and say, OK, we need to clearly. But and that's why I, I say that this wasn't written by a physician because they didn't consider, oh, you mean there are gray areas in medicine? You mean as biological creatures, we're not 100 percent one thing or the other? Hmm. Um, 
so they're going to revisit this stuff, but it was just insane. This draconian, you know, foot stomp that this will be banned under all circumstances. So I have to believe that the Texas case will go forward, even with the, even if it gets to the Supreme Court, Supreme Court is going to have to, is, I mean, the only logical humane reaction is, yeah, you're going to have to amend these laws to allow medical professionals to make medical professional de- you know, decisions. Yeah. Uh, and that's not made by some, you know, legislating farmer in op from op Alabama. Now know? let me, let uh, me play, let me play devil's advocate here. Um, you know, do you think what's, I mean, let's just say that the, that the legislatures, you know, come to Jesus and they say, okay, we're going to let the, they'll do what you say. Um, what's going to prevent uh, women who want to get an abortion for non-medical reasons, not to save their own lives, but have a good relationship with their doctors from saying like, hey, doc, write me a note. Do me a, do me a solid. Uh, just, just say that the, that, the fe- that the fetus isn't viable. Or uh, a liberal-minded physician who just happens to not, uh, not approve of the law to see, decide to do some medical uh, you know, nullification and say, you know, yeah, I'm just gonna like be. I'm I'm gonna just uh, you know, I'll I'll issue these letters willy nilly to anybody who wants them because I'm in fa- I'm a pro choice person, and no right, it, know. and that did happen. That did happen uh, when uh, there was movements to ban third trimester abortions, um, and so they had. I think it was Life of the Mother uh, was part of the. Um, or welfare of the mother, I forget the language, that was frankly abused. Um, you know, say, oh, she has a headache. She could be having uh, blood clots. So we got to abort the child. Um, there were, yeah, there were, there were, you know, re- reach arounds that they used and it was, um, you know, and, and it just infuriated. <laughs> reach around is different, Scott. Oh, I know. I meant, I meant it. <laughs> <laughs> because it was, because it, it was flying in the face of, um the law and abusing that provision that you're that we're suggesting that needs to be put back into these laws and you could hope that they wouldn't be abused but well you know time time will tell see i could be an editorial writer <laughs> i can well, this really so I'm, I'm looking at uh, based on you know this conversation i wanted to talk i mean obviously our brief here is is political more than anything else super interesting um, looking at the Gallup poll, as you know, Scott, they do they do really interesting historical data. Um, Gallup asks the same question year after year after year, and you really get a sense of the move the direction that the country is moving in. I'm looking at this question's been asked about should abortion be legal under any circumstances, only under certain circumstances, or illegal in all circumstances since 1975, uh, two years after Roe v. Wade. Uh, and I am looking at uh, basically a record high support for legal under any circumstances and record wow. low support for uh, illegal in any circumstances and uh, legal under, you know, basically it's sort of a steady as she goes. So 50% believe it should be legal under certain conditions, 35 think it should be legal uh, no matter what on demand and only 13 think it should be legal illegal all the time and that is a dramatic you, you're just seeing it it plummeted from 20 just two years ago at the beginning of the pandemic or sorry 20 yeah 2020 so 85 percent of americans are pro-choice to some extent now uh, that's a yeah, record yeah. high by far that is i mean in, look you're a conservative i think that's uh, I don't think that people necessarily vote abortion as their top issue, but or not very many of them do. But it is a dangerous trend for the GOP, I think. Oh, I think there's a, there's a lot of dangerous trends by the GOP. I think they are quick, they are really doing everything they can to make themselves a minority party or a regional party. They'd be very popular in the southeast, but that'll be it. Um, you know, I was... Um, a full confession here. I mean, this is why we do the podcast. I had cartooned for years being pro-life. Uh, I was actually started my career as a pro-choice uh, cartoonist and then uh, changed my view on that, kind of subscribed to the culture of life um, you know, agenda, which is against the death penalty, against euthanasia, against abortion. Now that we have it, 
now that it's actually happened, um, I think a lot of people like me are having second second guess, you know, uh, second doubts because it's one of those, wow, this really happened. What I had proposed and what I think a lot of people and with that poll probably doesn't show as clearly as I think um, polls in the past have shown is that roughly 70, 75 percent of Americans would agree with this. Unfettered access to first trimester. Some restrictions on second trimester uh, uh, pegged to uh, medical advances and how they treat premature preemies and, and an ab outright abolition on third trimester abortions, except for life of the mother. I, that, think I mean, right. that has, I think that, I think that has that something for where, everybody. That's where the public is. Off. But I think that's where the public is. Radio with uh, pro, um, pro-choice pro people who were rabid, rabid. And I brought up the third trimester and they were just, I, they just snarled and yelled that you can't know under all circumstances. I'm going, third, you know, so. Fourth trimester, fifth trimester. Yes. Yeah, I mean, the death penalty is really just pretty much a 25th trimester. Some, some people, you know, 217th trimester, I'm like, yeah, it's time for you to go. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think if we put it to a vote, I think you're absolutely right. My point is that now that the dog has caught the dog, caught the car, uh, what does he do with it? And that's where Republicans are. And, and this is not a winning... First of all, I think Americans are generally libertarian. They generally just want to be left alone and make their own decisions. And, well, there's a strong um, libertarian streak, and I do yeah. think that that this issue uh, it really emphasizes, showcases that. But couple that, I'm saying this is a this is a big issue. It's a medical issue, obviously. It's a big issue, but couple it with uh, Republicans banning. Look at what's happening in Florida: banning books. You can't say certain words. Um, if you go to a drag show, you can't uh, outline drag shows. Things like that. All of them fly in the face of what I think is the traditional American libertarianism, small L, libertarianism. Just, of, how many drag shows really are there in Florida? I mean, <laughs> well, I imagine down South Beach, probably quite a few. Um, oh, okay, that's a but, fair point. I suppose. But I would, I would say to Tallahassee, not as many. <laughs> um, but I guess, I don't guess, I know that my point here is that uh, the libertarian streak uh the rugged individualist streak that runs through america mm. this those ideas run very contrary to that and i come back to my point i just made a few minutes ago which is the, the republican party is working very hard to make itself a minority party because this is control this is you know um and this Although, is the state. let's not forget they are sitting pretty for the presidency for next year i would say right now it's donald trump's President, you know, presidency to lose at this stage, and they do, and the Republicans do control the House. So yeah. you know, right now they're 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 and they control a lot of state houses too. They I mean, do. Republicans are probably feeling pretty good about themselves. They probably feel like they can afford to take some abuse on the abortion issue, and uh, they'll still be okay. Yeah, but the overreach on these other issues is what's going to kill them. Um, and by the way, you know, you touch, I, I, I can't say this enough. I've mentioned it a couple of times on center cliff, which is the app Ted and I are involved in, which eventually short blogs, 30 seconds to five minutes long. Uh, you should get it. If you haven't downloaded it, it's free. And you, should, uh, you should get it. If you're tired of listening to this podcast, go on so or long. Or you just need more. Um, Not true. <laughs> Yeah, this is the this is but the I have, That's, those are the forty fives. Said over and over again, I've, uh, and I'm going to say it again. I'm sure I've said it many times before. If and anyone who thinks that the nominee for the Republican Party is going to be anybody else but Donald Trump, they are high on something, or they're deluded. There's something wrong with them, or they know something about get Donald them health. Trump's health, maybe. That's the well, only thing I can think of. Yeah, and that's and even his health, he would ha he has to drop dead. That's when he, that's when he will not be the nominee of the Republican Party. That's I think it. That's probably true. Yeah. Yeah. Did you notice that uh, DeSantis's polls they seem to have peaked out and started to slide again? Yeah. Yeah. Because now the Republican voters are looking at well, the primaries are coming up. They're at the yeah, you know, they're, they're focused, what, and they're starting to refocus. And they're going, "No, I like Donald Trump. I want to make America great again." Again. To what do you attribute the the uh, the DeSantis? Um, uh sort of peek out he's charmless a um people to know him is to loathe him 
I think people he's, he's gone like the to male uh, Hillary Clinton. Yeah, he is. He's just mean. Uh, he's just a dick. Yeah, he's and. A- so he's gone to New Hampshire. He's gone to South Carolina, and they're looking at him closer. And they're going, "This guy's an asshole." Yeah, no, um, I think that's. I think you know, that's, Republicans are, are are starting to focus now for real. And and Trump is starting to really take take digs at him, and it's effective. All right. Well, with that, I think we should uh, we should move on to our next topic, which will be uh, political unrest and violence in France over retirement of all things uh people are, are very pissed off anyway stay with us we'll be right back.